Omera admire on my rod in unto me share for me, Jesus. Omera admire on my rod in unto me share for me, Jesus. Omera admire on my rod in unto me share for me, Jesus. Unto us, me must share for me, Jesus. A yard boy, air force is saying it on fair, baby woman, and my young kind job, Barnes, from Cronon. Jesus, a bonny chain. Back rain in our coast, so never want to for him, mother done. A yard of Barnes, from Cronin, in you. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Ghanaian 2 o'clock tree mass. And in this mass, we honor Father Matthias Amuzu on, her, on his 25th anniversary. And the Anam Christ has some drink come on. A year and ne, yes, me, mu, yen, yer, philomena, flow, and num, as soon you so air, then your coupon say, Sir, or then our cogan, and no assigned in that bar, soon, Jimu, a yen, my men in the paper, yes, so, or coyer, ye be our course, or paper, pe, or then I send us so, no, sir, and a bamboo, and ye assume, Jay, a war, a busianum. A year, yen, yer, Michael, atta. And I'm assuming so at the Asadem Menyan Coupon, so are they a fake a cat neighbor, Gabriel, Quincy, a catushi, and a home. I say, say, or both penny when you fear me and son. And now, or say, say, rather than talk or some more, I call a woman in any one more, nor on my young Missro, any pa. So I soon hear me about Gloria and Chroma, and I'm master for real you so at the Nyan Coupon. So, Ode Afibako, Akani Kunu, Simon Boachi, and Fiumu, or Sresen Yanko Pon, and Mano, and Quatentin Yamu, or Din Wom, or Mani Hun Yanko Pon Ye, na on Shra or no, and in a Bushian Yana, Sasun Yen Yama Great Tetua Jan, and Nam Masi, so Eden Yanko Pon Asset, so Ode Afi Akani Fiumu. Margaret is Sresen Yanko Pon, Ebertal Cosso, Abon Hobine. A in a free musio, a signy a man in whom name po a bar or man of home and who ordain non fanco or stress and yanko po and shra nebusian in a sasun ye near bear ma a quasia him cra and a massy so and in a busian near the four in a a den yanko po answer so or de a fe a can neba ba ma joa and ima a da qua home or stress and yanko po ma colay home by. Omani ni mdiye, omani nyansa, no famo bra ensho onwe radi eni mwenyam. Can we all stand and the choir will give us a song to welcome the ministers and all our priests.
My dear brothers and sisters, we gather today to celebrate the 25 years of priesthood of our brother, our son, our, our nephew, uh, of Father Matthias Kutuka Yaw Amuzu. We thank God for the gift of 25 years of service. And we continue to pray for God's grace that you continue to serve the people of God with love and humility. I would like, in a very special way, thank my brother priests who are on the altar with us to celebrate this great day of our brother. I welcome Father Joe, who has been part of us for a long time in Ghana now in Ireland. Uh, Father, you're welcome. Thank you. And then I welcome Father Ben too. Father Ben is uh, uh, the director for Charismatic Group, and so Father has been well known journey with Father Matthias and many of you. Father, you're welcome. Thank you. Father has been to Ghana too, so we, we, we are happy to have both of them from who have gone to Ghana with us. Uh, I welcome Father Bugua. Father Bugua is also one of us from Kenya. He's a parish priest in downtown. And uh, he's a secretary for the African Catholic priests here in Toronto. So thank you, Father, for coming. And of course, we know our own Father Peter. So we thank Father Peter, the parish priest of uh, St. Andrews and Deacon Joseph. Uh, we welcome them, all of us. My name is Father Alex, in charge of Ghanaian community. So, uh, Fathers, you're welcome. And my brother, celebrate the day. Give thanks to God. Amen. Continue. All the visitors who have come here, far away. We have uh, the family of Adamuzu in front here. Uh, two of them are here. They came far away from U.S. to join us here. Uh, welcome, and many of you from different parishes. Some of you we have met in many ways, and so I say welcome and thank you for joining uh, your son, your priest, your brother in celebrating God's gift of priesthood. Thank you. <coughs> <clears throat> My soul, praise the Lord.
It was not you who chose me, says the Lord, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, 25 years ago, around this time, I was being ordained a priest of the, for the Archdiocese of Accra. And um, my late bishop, Dominic Andor, said one thing. He called me a coup maker because my name is Kotoka. So I was a coup maker. And he said, I want you to make coup. The coup I would like you to make should be spiritual coup. Amen? Amen. The devil should never have authority over your life and your ministry. And so as we gather here to celebrate this Eucharist, let us acknowledge our weaknesses and shortcomings. For the many times we have allowed the evil one to deceive us and to lead us astray. And come now to the presence of God and ask him to purge us from all our sins so that our offering today may be acceptable to him. I confess Lord, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, everybody, all you the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray. <coughs> may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins, and may He bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. <coughs> Let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ, for the ministry of your church. Grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your mysteries. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now you have to share a tosu edunsia. I can cast me the canoe, you've been here for Genesis. Daku, every genebia, Abraham, Tinan to Madame Manano, a radi in home, share no mamma miponum, a man and his son, who may mammy as I said, with Janan and Chain, who are pet, no de make a free into Madonna and no. I won't from. Can I say? Mira, so only me can. And yeah, Miss Laura, in San Wakua Home Uncle. What didn't you shock a What didn't you shock a crack? Baba Amawa will grow when I say. Now, Matinamu, now Matinimu, Biano, I say. Mamma and Papa, no, Kakrebi, Emrebon. Now, Mum Frankie, come on. 
and son and mother also ako. In Tina Mobile Friday, my poor tea, who we are said, Yea, dear, who see ye. Abraham can hook on to my denim, or to Sarah, or can say, Yan in ten fifty is some cry, mammy and son, Nafato Pano. I fear Abraham did make a call named Chilmo. For children and Chuguma are in Hofe, our daughter, the no man, a poor, my own so can a home, the Koye, a Diane. Now, the Nufusio Pro Nufusio and Nene Chuguma are, or dear, a Diane will be see one and name. Now, we general one chain, Diana say, Ma, would he deem? Who be sound to say? Or is Sarah or him? Would we all say, I want to my dining room? I feel the whole owner can say, I feel certain that the baby be a mess of my baby's room. The baby do honor now, we are all by Bema. A radio simony, the anomaly is simple. And you saw me on your bed, you said, You did a sentinel and a better night, a ready fee, a ready one or better with popcorn corners. So, and you saw one of it, but you'll be. There are four decent beer in the home. Now, would you a sentinel? They are kind of coming on the cray. Now, I'm from the church of my in the school. They are sent and written already fee. Everybody, why not? But now, near on your young company. Now, I'm from Subobia into the young soul. Now, only dear, would you want to do on our soul already in me? Ye or Nisika Bobosia, only see home. Now only see can umu de Udibimusu. The way you know in him that. Now The second reading, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, I'm now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became a servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is Christ whom we proclaim, warning every person and teaching every person in all wisdom, so that we may present every person mature in Christ, the word of the Lord.
Blessed are they who hold fast to God's word in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to Jesus and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. It's great to be with all of you today, and I'm very honored. Thank you. Father Matthias invited me to share reflect a little on the Word of God this afternoon, and it's a great honor, a great privilege uh, to be able to do that on this, this very special day. It is uh, Sunday in our liturgical calendar, but obviously we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Father Matthias, and uh, we're just uh, delighted to be able to celebrate this uh, gift of the priesthood, this gift of the priesthood, uh, priesthood, the priesthood which is for the people. It's not for Father Matthias, not for myself, not for our, uh, our priesthood is for, for God. Our priesthood is for his people. And uh, I would say in the priesthood, uh, Father Matthias has chosen the better part. Yeah, not to contrast that with marriage, you know, <laughs> but just to say he has chosen, you know, the call, the call that God has placed on his life. He has said yes to that call. He has said yes to that call and he's chosen a good portion he's chosen a good thing and the Lord has highly blessed uh, Father Matthias uh, over uh, many many years he's a little ahead of me I just celebrated my 20th anniversary this year so he's got me by five years so I'm just on his tail a little bit behind so the father is setting a good example for me and maybe for all of us, but uh, he's truly a man of God. He's a man of God. He has a heart for the Lord. He's got a great zeal for the kingdom of God. He's anointed. Father has been highly anointed and blessed by the Lord and gifted by the Lord. He has an authority over principalities and powers and demons. Some of that comes with the uh, priesthood, the exercise of our priestly ministry, but some of it comes, I think, by way of charism, by way of gifting, and I think Father is gifted in that area. I'm not here, I guess, to just expound Father uh, Matthias and all his gifts, but I've got to highlight a few of them. 
right? And 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 uh, but his his. Uh, Power and authority over 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 principalities and powers. He's been involved in that kind of ministry for years. I also thought, as I was reflecting earlier, his compassion, his compassion for the people of God. He's been doing hospital ministry for a number of years here in Toronto, and it's been beautiful to just hear the stories of how he's on the road. Sometimes all night long, he's going doing emergency calls at the hospital to come and bring sacraments to those that are ailing and sick. There's a, there's a heart that Father Matthias has for his people, which is really the heart of Jesus for his people. It's the heart of Christ that's in Father that's being, you know, uh, poured out for his people. And there's a suffering involved. As I heard that second reading tonight, we make up what's lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Right, the body of Christ makes up for it. In a, in a, in a sense, as priests and even yourselves as lay people with your own uh, lay kind of priestly identity, we make up for those sufferings. We enter into the very sufferings of Jesus. We, we enter into that mystery as a libation, as an offering to the Lord, as an offering for his people when we serve, when we serve, when we give, when we lay down our lives, when we make sacrifice. And it's such a beautiful thing to witness, and I've witnessed it many times with, with Father Matthias. And so his care and his love for the Lord. He's just got a great love for the Lord. He's ready to follow the Lord, do the will of the Lord. And um, the other thought I had just even as I was driving earlier with Mother Mary Bernadette, Father had prayed over her a month or so ago in a kind of a prophetic room. On We've been in part of this Encounter Ministries team and father had a privilege uh, the opportunity to pray over mother and and uh mother was just saying like everything he said to me was just so bang on it was so right on he just so spoke so prophetically into my life in that moment and so just know father has been really highly favored highly gifted by the lord and you know it, the, the the you know the foundational gift being the priesthood but then also just the charisms and the like, you know. And so we just want to honor you, Father, today. And, and, and I, I, like I said, I'm so privileged to be able to be, be here today to honor you. I don't know that I'm going to be able to give you a good Ghanaian homily. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to be in English. I'd love to. I've been to Ghana a few times, and I have one really, uh, one kind of comical situation. I was there with Father Francis Donnelly, and we were over in Ghana, and uh, we were doing a workshop, I think, for seminarians in, in, uh, in uh, I think it was, was it in uh, Kumasi maybe, eh? I think it was in Kumasi. So anyways, we were there doing the workshop and Father Donnelly got up and he gave this rip-roaring 15-minute homily. Well, one of the priests got up and thought, you know what, uh, if you don't mind, Father, uh, when Father was done, he says, I'm going to translate that. And the priest got up, and I think he gave a 40-minute translation. <laughs> and about halfway through, I looked at Father Donnelly, and I said, I think he's adding something. <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, the Ghanaians, they know how to preach. They know how to preach. The worship, I just loved my times in Ghana. The first time I went there, I showed up. And the next day I went to this big Pan-African charismatic conference in Accra. And there were, you know, thousands of people there. And, um, you know, there was no schedule. I think there was a whole schedule that was organized, but then all of a sudden someone came on the microphone and said, you know what, we've changed the whole morning schedule, we're going to start with Mass. I was like, okay, here I am, I'm in Ghana. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and then, as they started Mass, the singing started the worship began going on and it was like wow the opening songs were like 40 minutes <laughs> finally we went and processed in right and and it was like okay the mass is going and then we got to the gloria and it was another 40 minutes <laughs> of singing and dancing the, the most amazing thing was, it was really, the, the, the layout was really odd because they had a stage up front where all the speakers were sitting and then they had this big open area and it was like a, I don't know, half of a football field, you know, a couple hundred feet and there was nobody sitting in that big area 
And then about 200 feet away, there was a tent with all the people sitting down there. And then there were tents along the side and tents on the east and the west. And I thought, why don't they put the people in the middle? Why are they all around the perimeter? But then when the worship started, everybody got up and started dancing. And they all came into the middle. And they danced for 40 minutes. And I thought, oh, that's what's going on. Now I get it. Maybe we need to do that in our, in our uh, Canadian parishes, right? Make a dance platform, a, a, a place in the middle of the church, up just near the altar where we can really celebrate, right? It was a beautiful experience. Anyways, that first Mass was over four hours long. Four hours. I thought I got the full immersion, full immersion in the Ghana culture, right? And I fell in love. I fell in love with the Ghana culture. And, and, and uh, anyways, it's, it's been beautiful to be able to travel a few times there and continue to, to offer workshops. Father loves my story. Can I tell you the story? I got, I got, what we, 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 I think it was the second or third time I'd gone back. We got invited by the bishop in Don Cochram, which is an outlying area. And to go, I'm probably pronouncing that horribly. But anyways, we got invited by him to go train catechists in the, the so the catechists would go out into the villages and teach the people, right? And, 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 and so we got invited while well, we were there three, four days training catechists. During those three or four days, there were all sorts of chickens running around the bishop's house. So every time we'd go into the house or leave the house, all these chickens were scurrying around. We'd have to be stepping over them almost. And then on the final day, as we were, you know, getting ready to leave that day in, in the evening, whenever I was coming back and forth from the, the house, I couldn't find the chickens. They were nowhere to be found. But then when dinner got served that night, we had a big, huge plate of chicken. <coughs> and I figured out what happened to the chickens that day. Amen. So that was a little of my immersion in Tagana. Uh, so lots of fun. Anyways, I guess I should talk about the gospel and the readings today. Uh, you know, and uh, be, feel free to have someone translate afterwards. But I was moved by this first reading. We didn't. We read it in the in the Ghanaian uh, language, not in English. But it was the story from Genesis of Abraham at Mamre and, and the three angels that appear to him. And they appear to him. Uh, it's a visit. It's a visitation. I say appear. They there are three men that show up. I, we assume that they were angels, but really depicting the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So tradition looks at that as a, as a visitation of God to Abraham to speak ultimately a prophetic word into his life that he's going to have a descendant, that Sarah is going to bear a child uh, uh, ultimately. And, and so God is coming and drawing close to Abraham to speak this word into their life ultimately this promise into their life but i was really moved as i as i read that could someone get me a glass of water possibly yeah thank you i was very moved when i read that because i i was moved by the response of abraham the response of abraham to this visitation and let me just touch on a few points when he saw them when he saw these three individuals coming to his house he ran from the tent entrance to meet them. He bowed down to the ground. He ran to meet them. He bowed to the ground. And he says, Lord, if I find favor with you, and so he recognizes, he's saying, Lord, he's recognizing this is a divine visitation. Lord, if, if I have favor with you, don't pass me by. Let me get a little water. Let me bring you some water so, you can, so your feet can be washed rest yourselves under a tree let me bring you some bread that you may refresh uh, refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on 
Okay? And so there's this right away, this readiness to serve the Lord, this readiness to be attentive to the need of the Lord. And this eagerness, I'm seeing and reading in this kind of an eagerness to please the Lord, an eagerness to, to, to be good to the Lord, right? Abraham then hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, make some little cakes, right? Abraham ran to the herd. So he, he hastened to the tent, then he ran to the herd and, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a servant who prepared it. Oh, it says, who hastened to prepare it. So again, there's a, there's a sense of, of urgency. There's a sense of, of, of activity, of, 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 of movement here. Maybe of excitement, right? And then he took curds and milks and the calf that he prepared and set it before them and stood by them under the tree while they ate. Uh, anyways, I, it just struck me that, you know, in our own lives... Do we have an excitement in our own hearts for that visitation with God? You know, is it when we, when we go to have our prayer time, because obviously the gospel is all about prayer uh, and, and uh, Mary and Martha, right, in this whole prayer situation. So as I was reading that first reading, I was kind of, thank you so much, connecting it to prayer and that... Uh, uh, Martha, you know, Mary had chosen the better part to sit at the feet of the Lord. She wanted to be there at the feet of Jesus to hear his voice, to listen to that revelation that he had for her. He wanted, she wanted to gain all she could gain from the Lord. There was a, a desire to be with Jesus. There was a, a desire to connect with the Lord and receive his blessing in her life. And so too, I almost, I see that in Abraham as well, an eagerness to please the Lord, an eagerness to be with the Lord, an eagerness to get what the Lord has for him, but maybe also just an eagerness to love on the Lord as he gains, you know, as he takes the food, as he prepares it, as he brings water so that the, the visitor can wash his feet. Again, in my own life, when I look at my own life, I wonder how eager am I at times to enter into that quiet with the Lord? How eager am I to take my prayer time every day? How often I get distracted by, you know, YouTube videos? How often do I get distracted by watching the news? How often do I get distracted by a hundred and one things that can come at me every day? As Martha got distracted, she was getting distracted, Jesus said. How often do we get distracted by so many things and we lose our focus, we lose our attention on the Lord, on the things that matter, right? Which is to be with the Lord, to hear the Lord, so that ultimately we can follow the Lord, we can be pleasing to the Lord, we can bless the Lord with our life. And I think Abraham is showing a, us a way, right, to kind of rekindle that desire to be with the Lord. And I think Mary is showing us a way to, 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 to make that a priority, to be with the Lord, to listen to the Lord. And so that might be my question, you know. Do you take time every day to spend it with Jesus? Do you take some time, some quiet time, to go sit at the feet of Jesus? Do you carve out some time in the busyness of your schedule, in the busyness of the day, to wait upon the Lord? To say, Lord Jesus, you're number one in my life and I need to spend time with you. I need to come into your presence. I need to sit on your feet, at your feet so that I can get what you want to give to me. So that I can gain your blessing. So that I can live ultimately in your will. How high a priority is it in our life? Is there an eagerness in our hearts like the eagerness in Abraham's heart to to be there, to be present, to serve the Lord. You know, or is it just uh, hum -de dum la-dee-da, you know, it's another thing, oh yeah, you know, okay, I should probably go pray today. You know, when I, 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 you know, I've been walking with this new community of religious sisters, the Queen Shiva Mary community in Ottawa, Mother Mary Bernadette, the foundress, is sitting here, and uh, in our congregation today, and I'm always amazed at the zeal in the hearts of the sisters for personal prayer. I'm always amazed. They're up bright and early every morning in that chapel praying. But it's not only that, 
They're ready oftentimes through the day to run back to the chapel. Often I come to the chapel and I see someone scurrying in to do an afternoon prayer or a little private vigil. Or even at night, Friday night, they have a prayer meeting. Like Friday night, I'm tired. I'm tired. It's been a long week. You know, serving, doing whatever it is. What do the sisters do? They have a prayer meeting. Friday night. And, and when I see that, I get moved in my heart. I get moved at their zeal for the Lord. I get moved at their desire to, to do business with Jesus. I get moved by their desire to get close to God. And that it's not just any old thing. It's not just, okay, I've fulfilled my duties, you know, and I'm, I'll be done with you now, God. There's a gospel around that, isn't there? You know, I'll be just done with you. No, their desire is to please the Lord. Their desire is to spend time with the Lord. Their desire is to fit, sit at the feet of the Lord. And, and how, you know, do we have that desire for God? Do we have that desire? And if we don't, you know, that maybe needs to be our first prayer. Lord, enkindle that desire in my heart. Ignite a fire in my heart. Ignite more of a Holy Spirit fire for intimacy with you. More of a fire of desire, of longing in my heart to spend time with you. And Lord, protect me from the busyness. Protect me from the distractions, the things that would set my heart apart from you. I do think that we can do a whole lot of things each day and at the same time maintain a strong prayer life. I don't think the two have to be in, in competition for one another. I think we can have intimate times with the Lord and actually get a fair bit done during the day. I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the sisters Mother Angelica. Mother Angelica down in, she's the foundress of EWTN, she's passed on now. But I remember reading her book years ago and they were starting uh, their television network, their television station which ended up going worldwide. And as she was setting up and establishing EWTN, there were times that it got really busy, right? Here they are developing this, this, whole, this whole, you know, technology and, and all the programming and everything. And Mother Angelica said when it got really busy, she asked the sisters to do an extra holy hour. Doesn't that kind of go against the grain of our thinking? When we get really busy, our temptation is to forego the holy hour, to put it aside. And yet for her at that time, it was like, no, we need prayer even more because what we need to do is multiply our effectiveness through the rest of the day. And if we spend quality time with God, God's going to bless our day. He's going to bless our busyness. He's going to bless our activities so we get even more done than we would have. Amen? Amen? What's that about the Lord? You know, unless the Lord buildeth the house, what's it say? They toil in vain. I'm helping the sisters build a convent right now. My community gave me a year off to work on building a convent for them and so we're building a mother house up near Ottawa and we're working rather hard every day, you know, and all of that. So it's been a bit of a challenge, but we've been trying to get up. We're getting up now at 5 a.m. Well, sometimes 10 after. <laughs> we're getting up 10 after 5 and getting in that chapel, getting a holy hour in. A holy hour with the Lord, getting mass in so that I can get on the job site for 7.30 a.m. Oh man, that's a little tough. It means I have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. I'm not used to that. I'm a bit of a night hawk. You know, but I'm learning. Here I am in my 50s learning a new trick. Getting up early, right? Anyways. I just was moved today. You know, I think prayer needs to be heart and center of our lives. It needs to be front and center of our lives. I think God wants a relationship with every one of us. He wants an intimate relationship. He wants a friendship with all of, every one of us. He wants us have, spending time with him throughout the day and setting aside times through the day where we can 
say, Lord, I just want to walk in friendship with you. I want to hear your voice. I want to follow you. I want to get to know you. I want to love on you. Right? Oftentimes we reduce our faith to just a, a bunch of you know, things that I, I have to do. Requirements, laws, duties, obligations, all of that. And all of that's good. There's nothing wrong with duties, obligations, laws, and all of that. But I think what the Lord is looking for is our heart. He wants to see our heart. And he wants to know that our hearts are with the Lord. And that we're in love with Jesus. And that we want to follow him. And we want to serve him. Where's your heart? Where are our hearts? Our hearts in that right place with Jesus where we can really, you know, enter into that friendship with God that he wants to have with us so that we can ultimately, you know, be blessed in our lives and, and become a blessing, a light to the Gentiles, a light in the darkness wherever we find ourselves. You know, when the church gives us, I think, these readings this morning to, to, or this afternoon, you know, this day, to, to reflect on that. Anyways... I think that's all I have. So anyways, Father Matthias, we love you. We love you. You're an awesome man of God. You have a great heart for the Lord. You're a man of prayer. I know that. You know, because the Lord has blessed your life. He's blessed you. And he, you walk, you truly do walk with the Lord. And so thank you today, as we celebrate the anniversary, we we're, have an opportunity to re be reminded of that, to be reminded of that. And please, a priest is meant, I just read something today, a priest is meant to be praying for his people. That's part of the duty of the priest, to pray for the people. So pray for us, Father. Please pray for us that we would do business with Jesus, that we wouldn't just live our, our prayer life out of a sense of duty and obligation, but that we would really engage the Lord at the level of the heart, that we would really go after Jesus like Abraham went after the Lord, that we would really be ready to waste time like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, that we would, so that we can be filled with his glory, that we can be filled with his power, we can be filled with his divine life. So that we can go out and change the world. Amen? <clears throat> or that God can change the world through us. Amen? That's our destiny. That's our call. It's to be a people of God set apart for his kingdom. Set apart for his presence. So that we can, you know, be blessing. A blessing in the world. The Lord called Abraham. He said, Abraham, you will bless the nations. Abraham was to be a blessing to the nations. We are to be a blessing, maybe not to all the nations, except in Toronto, all the nations are here. We are to be a, a blessing to the people we meet every day. We can't be a blessing to the people we meet every day unless we are rooted in that intimacy with God, in that friendship with Jesus, unless we're rooted in a prayer life that's doing something in us, that's changing us and transforming us. We can't bless the world. It just doesn't work. Otherwise, we're a noisy gong. Otherwise, we're not really, really able to bring and convey the blessing and power and presence of God. We need to get close to Jesus. We need to be present to the Lord. So pray for us, Father Matthias. Pray for us that we would be able to say yes to Jesus, not just once in a while, but every day. Every day, make Jesus the center of our lives. Every day, give him that time in our hearts so that we can follow him and hear his voice. And uh, when we all are able to do that, I think the world starts to get transformed. And that's, I think, the desire of all of us. We want to see the world change. We want to see the world transformed. But it begins in each one of us. So, <sighs> amen. <laughs> I'd toast you, Father, 25 years, maybe over lunch later, uh, the, the food. Yes. Shall we please rise and profess our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach the throne of grace and present our petitions. We pray for the church who is called to be at the feet of Jesus so that we can hear him and in turn go and serve the marginalized of the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for Father Matthias as he celebrates his 25th anniversary of priesthood, that the Lord may make him embody the hospitality of Abraham and Martha, and also the listening ability of Mary at the feet of Jesus, so that he will be able to serve those that God has entrusted into his hands. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have been called to be with the Lord, especially the parents of Father Matthias, who gave him up to the work of God, that the Lord may have a place for them and for all that the Lord has called to his own. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for vocations that this day may also inspire the youth of our community so that they may also answer the call of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us be silent and pray in our own hearts and ask God how we can be with Jesus at any particular moment and answer his call. We pray to the Lord. Lord Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all these prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
pray, my dear people of God, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, on where they ask we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his past mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give that to all things and made them holy and you never cease to gather the people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the city passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, I demand the peace and salvation to all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Franz our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to all departed brothers and sisters and all who, are, who were pleasing to you. As they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Yes, we say, say, Bompire, ye can say, ye ja was through, to him with so, by him in Iraq. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your world, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the world, but you want to save the world of my soul. May the body and blood of God purify us and bring us to life everlasting.
for his goodness to me. The cup of salvation I will raise, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Let us pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for today. We thank God for Father Matthias' life. This is Ghanaian community, and today is the third Sunday of the month. Every third Sunday of the month, we do contribution to support our community. And we do that in competition between women and men. So today we are going to start with the men and then the women will follow. We will ask the prayer to give us some. And This is to support our community. Amen. Amen, please. Amen, amen, you know.
Amen. 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 There will be a lot of joy in heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, can we listen to a few announcements here? The youth are being reminded to register with the youth group. If you want to be a member, you register with our sister, Akusuye Cha. Her number is 647-978-4361. The organizers for Father Amuzu 25th anniversary reception are requesting all parents with their children to note if you have a child who is more than five years old, they should all go to Cecilia room at upstairs for the reception. Children under five years should remain with their parents. Everybody here who is going to the parish hall should go through the back entrance, not through the church kitchen. Please listen to one, this one very carefully. Go through the back of the parish hall, please. Announcement teach, he said, Wama umudi ya mimu ama ya di fada amuzu afishi ya dayi Eche ya nse Ubiya uoba wa hano Saobanu wa five years Mfiye mimu enye chira Umu nina ada kwa esroho Ewa Cecilia room ho Eho eno mba yomu refreshment Saobanu swa No yebe five years Umu ni umu mamu Na umu parents Ena ebetina Ewa be be a be refreshment, you know. Na ye ni na ansu yanti a si ese. Parish ho ho no ye ni na ye be ko ho ne mo mo no o ko ho a enfa ejade pan no ye ni na ko fe chiri ho ne ye ngure mo ejade pan no ko abe du o ne o ma tumu ye si ma obi a enfa ho. Efe nso dekin ene ye ni an ma umudi ye ni mu. Emi ya bo esu ewo asori muha si enfento obi ya opese obe bo esu a eba so 30th of July. Obi ya obe bo esu a eba so obi ya obe bo esu a eba so Saturday 30th of July no. Mo mo din sa wo de fomu su no ebe ma ye ni ya akoto. Ana ye niya Sophia, ana de kenyere sister Agi, na ayye suwa anu, ayye next week Sunday, e se sa wode fomu sune ba. Bo mo di an sa wode fomu sune ba, next week Sunday, e se su bo no, ayye 30th of July. Me da masi be bri. That is the end of that announcement, and then we will all go after this, and have joined Father to celebrate his anniversary. Oh, okay. So, um, the back of the hall, of the parish hall, when you get to the um, parking lot, you go behind. Don't go straight to the parish hall. That is going through the kitchen, but you go through behind. There will be some there directing people to go there. Thank you very much. Ya mwa mwa dinsi ya befa echile wwa kwa eno. Wamuse wunye ya wamo pa. Ya da mwa si bibre. It's time for blessing. Let's call our sister Philomena Aflo for Save Jenny from Ghana. 
Our sister is here today to say a big thank you to the Lord for what he, he has done for her, for his protection. Sister Philomena Mpachobrana, Father Emon Paimau, Sodwa Kogana Ba Asumbium. Father Les, please. And we have the following people who are celebrating their birthdays. Gabriel Akantushi, Simon Boache, Margaret Techuajan, Epamchomongana Father, Emompai Emamo. Gabriel Akantushi, Simon Boache, Margaret Techiwajain. Father, 
my prayers uh, for blessing, special blessing today. And I ask all the priests to please come forward and we pray for our brother, uh, including the clergy. I can see all my big, big men and women in the church. Thank you. When we go to the parish hall, I will talk. Shall we rise for the blessing? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks.